How's it going, everybody? Welcome into Pinnacle Point Sports' first podcast. I'm your host, Paul Brett. Today we're going to talk about the soon-to-be 0-8 New York Jets. This is a team led by uh, second-year head coach Adam Gase. The Jets have stunk in every facet this year. Uh, Franchise quarterback Sam Darnold has regressed, it seems, and the offensive line Joe Douglas has built seems to only have one piece after bringing in five new starters, but that piece is rookie left tackle Makai Becton. We'll talk about him later. Uh, The Jets' defense, after being a surprise last year being short manned and still overachieving it was expected to be a bit better this year some improvements on the outside at corner Avery Williamson coming back though the loss of Jamal Adams definitely hurt and CJ Mosley opting out was definitely not something in the Jets plans and then injury has also been a really big part of this season so far. The New York Jets have yet to have all three of their starting wide receivers that they expected to have week one on the field yet. Denzel Mims, the rookie second round pick out of Baylor, made his debut last week. He had four catches for 42 yards. He looked pretty good. We'll talk about him more later as well. The Jets have been disappointing in every way, and they find a new way to disappoint fans every single week. But that's honestly okay at this point. I think a large portion of the fan base has succumbed to the idea that the team is tanking. This is a lost season. Unfortunately for Sam Darnold, it looks like the Jets will be moving on from him after this season. Hopefully for him, he'll get sent to a team like a New Orleans or a Pittsburgh or an Indianapolis or maybe a Minnesota. Uh, All teams who are looking for... A young quarterback with good potential, obviously, uh, with an older quarterback in place right now that might not necessarily be uh, the long-term plan even two, three years down the road. You look at Pittsburgh, and Big Ben has been injured so many times. As he gets older and older, his play continues to drop to not what it used to be. Sam Darnold would be pretty happy there. He'd get to team up with his buddy Juju from college. And with an already built offensive line and a good coaching staff, Sam Darnold, I still think with the arm talent that he has, the athleticism that he possesses, it's pretty easy to think that he could be successful in this league somewhere else. Unfortunately for him and the Jets, their timelines just don't really match up anymore. With that, that would bring in Trevor Lawrence, uh, the best quarterback prospect since Andrew Luck, maybe Peyton Manning. Scouts have said that he's expected to get better grades than Andrew Luck did when Luck came out of Stanford. If the Jets can land that guy, you have to feel pretty good about your future at quarterback. You want a franchise quarterback, and if you can get Trevor Lawrence, who is supposed to be this generational talent, on a five-year rookie wage deal, he's going to lead you to the playoffs probably by his second year. He's just as athletic as Sam Darnold. He's accurate. He makes great reads. He's lost one game in college, and it was the national championship game. The guy has been everything from the start since he got got to college. He has performed and lived up to expectations. If he is there and the Jets have the number one pick, you got to take that guy. With that... The Jets will have 17 more picks in the next two years to help replenish their roster. And Joe Douglas's first rookie class has been showing out here in recent weeks. Now, Denzel Mims finally got on the field last week against Buffalo. Four catches for 42 yards in just the first half. And that's because in the second half, Buffalo put all-pro cornerback Tredavious White on him, which is a very big sign of respect. Uh, The rookie talked about it after the game, how he and White went back and forth a bit with some trash talking, and it just really made him feel like he belonged on uh, an NFL field. So he has a certain swagger uh, that you could even see in that first game, and I think we're going to see more and more, and hopefully we'll see this week with Crowder most likely being out and Perriman being out with a concussion. Hopefully Mims will see a majority of the targets in the offense this week. That's really what you want here for the rest of the season is to see these young guys that Joe Douglas brought in continue to do well and develop because they're going to be big pieces for next year. You look at you look at LaMichael Perrine out of Florida. 
He's looked good uh, as his role has increased since the Jets let go Le'Veon Bell last week. He took the majority of the snaps in what sh should be what we see for the rest of the season in Frank Gore. Uh, in limited usages, uh, he's a good change of pace kind of running back. He's going to give you good chunks of yards here and there, but he's not someone that should be a workhorse by any means. I don't want to see him in the passing game, and he is not part of the future. Michael Perrine did have his first career touchdown. He had 11 carries. He had just under 4 yards. He also he also had a couple of catches for 16 yards. It was encouraging to see a little bit from him, and hopefully we'll see more as the season progresses and he starts to pick up more. Uh, I'd like to see a bit better blocking out of him. I think he missed a few assignments last week against the Bills, and that's expected with some growing pains. It really stinks for Sam Darnold when he takes those hits. Um, but it also, Darnold has to get the ball out faster at times as well. Let's talk about Makai Becton also. Makai, he missed a couple of games after injuring his shoulder and then trying to play through it as a backup against the Broncos. It, it was really questionable management by the Jets coaching staff to put him in that game. That's your franchise left tackle that you really can't handle losing him. So the Jets... I would really like them to be careful with him going forward, especially in a lost season. Last week, he was just shaking off a little bit of rust. He gave up two sacks and two other hurries, but otherwise, he looked outstanding once again. Joe Douglas, 100%, looks like he got the right guy at 11. Makai Becton is going to be the franchise left tackle for a long, long time, as long as he can stay healthy and the Jets take care of him, which will make future Jet, hopefully, Trevor Lawrence, very, very happy. After that, uh, the Jets draft class gets a little hairier, uh, or a, a little blurrier, I guess is a better way to put it. Uh, Bryce Hall is going to be returning pretty soon, which is going to be really exciting. He was a first round talent that fell all the way to the fifth round after breaking an ankle, which was really disappointing for him, but unfortunately his loss was the Jets gain, hopefully, as he's a guy who dominated in the ACC who really looks good on film, and hopefully if he can keep most of that athleticism after rehabbing that ankle, he could be a really good piece for this New York Jets team going forward who need defensive backs. The Jets look like they've found something in Bless Austin, but outside of that, Pierre Desir has been serviceable, but he is not a long-term option. They have a few pieces from the practice squad who have been called up. Lamar Jackson, uh, Javelon Guidry have been played sparingly, and they've done a nice job. But then again, you look, and Brian Poole, he's starting to get a little bit older. He's probably going to want to leave the Jets after this season if he can capitalize on two straight good seasons with the Jets and find a deal with a contender as he hits really into the prime of his career. He's been one of the best slot corners in the league. The Jets have one good piece there in Bless Austin, hopefully another one in Bryce Hall. And then we get into talking about Braden Mann, who's been pretty good for the Jets so far. The sixth round pick out of Texas A&M, the punter, he's gotten a lot of work this year, that's for sure. In an Adam Gase offense, you want to talk about fit. Now that is a guy who fits that offense he uh, he's done well. He's he was picked in the sixth round for a reason. He was the Ray Guy Award winner in college. He's a very good punter. He's going to be the Jets punter for a long time. Hopefully, that's why you spend that pick in the sixth round on him. No complaints there. Now we haven't seen offensive lineman Cam Clark yet. He was another fourth round pick, who. The Jets were pretty excited about. He had a really good game against Clemson last year where it really put him on the national radar. He's a left tackle who, at about 6'3", he's a little undersized for an NFL left tackle, but someone who could potentially be a right tackle or more likely one of the Jets' guards of the future. The Jets really like him. He's a high-character guy. He's struggled with injuries so far this season. But this was expected to be a development season for him anyway. He wasn't really expected to get many reps in games. So hopefully we'll get to see him down the stretch a little bit, uh, see what Joe Douglas saw. 
These are all high character guys that Joe Douglas brought in. Uh, the only bust pick that we can really talk about so far is James Morgan, the other fourth round pick. And the only reason he's been kind of a bust is because he hasn't been active for a game so far this year. And the Jets have used one of their practice squad call-ups each week on, you know, a quarterback who is also an undrafted rookie this year. Uh, so it, it's a little concerning in that, but we also expected it to be a development season for him. Sam Darnold is going to take the majority of the reps, Joe Flacco being healthy. It's not going to really matter. But unfortunately, you really would love to see an impact player from a fourth round pick. Uh, and so far, you know, the Jets, he's just been a mystery for Jets fans. So that's the only thing that you can really talk about being a bust so far. I suppose you could probably also talk about Jabari Zuniga, another pick out of Florida, uh, not playing a game yet. He could probably be seen as a bust, but uh, I don't think it's fair to label him as a bust. I think that we got to wait and see. He was a productive college player when he was healthy. That's just the biggest if, is if he can stay healthy. I think we're going to get to see him soon, though, which is very, very exciting. So Joe Douglas proved so far that he is a good drafter hopefully he can follow it up with a good second and third draft with all the picks that he's acquired and the Jets could realistically be in playoff contention I don't think in 2021 but probably by 2022 with a brand new head coach which is something else we should talk about coming up next time but for tonight that's all I'm gonna talk about Thank you guys so much for listening, and I will talk to you next time. This was Pinnacle Points with Paul Brecht. All right, peace out, guys.